1983, when I was still in high school, Tom Cruise in the movie Risky Business uttered five famous words that would change my life forever. Cruise said with a smile on his face, Porsche, there is no substitute. He said these five words from behind the wheel of a Porsche 928, and ever since, I have fallen deeply in love with the iconic sports car from Stuttgart. Welcome to Project Porsche, TFL's new Porsche-holic video series. Project Porsche is a love letter to all of you who, like me, have always dreamed of owning a Porsche. With the help of Porsche expert Adam Jaspers, every other Saturday for the next six months, I'll be your tour guide into the world of Porsche. Next week, we'll start the video series by going on the hunt to buy a used Porsche 928, just like the car in Risky Business but you won't be surprised by what car I end up buying. We'll provide you professional tips on what to look for when shopping for a used Porsche, and we'll even show you how to change out that dreaded IMS bearing. We'll go Porsche ice racing. We'll drive and review new and classic Porsches, but that's all still ahead. Today, we start by getting to know local Porsche expert and Porsche race car driver Adam Jaspers your guide to all things Porsche. Recently, I sat down with Adam and we discussed the top five current classic Porsche bargains for all of you who, like me, have dreamed of owning the car of your childhood dreams. And that's coming up right now on episode one of Project Porsche. Welcome to this very special episode of Project Porsche. And to my left is our partner in this, Adam Jaspers from Renstall. Thanks for coming down, Adam. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, and thanks for bringing your boxer, man. What a cool car. I know. Was, uh, was quite a steal. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about, well, we put together a list, the five bargain basement Porsches, if you can call a Porsche a bargain basement. <laughs> or if you're looking at investing in a Porsche, these are the five cars that we would invest in. Yeah. So some of them are for fun, and some of them are for investment, right? Yeah, they're all cars that uh, any guy who loves Porsches, or any, any car, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's start with number five, as always. The 997. So why don't you tell me about the 997, first of all. It's obviously the last generation of 911. It, it, it's what we might call the first generation to use 911, right? Exactly. It's, it's the one that's out of production. It's it's probably probably right now one of the most popular used uh, 911s. The prices are still pretty strong on them, but they're falling precipitously. Yeah, so there's this rule that Adam told me about when I was at your place. He said, when you buy a new Porsche, figure it'll drop a 911, actually. What, 10K a year? About 10K a year. And then they hit that $30,000 mark, and, and that's it. And, of course, classic Porsches right now, especially the air-cooled ones, are through the ceiling. I mean, that market is, like, on fire, and it's taken off. Yeah, the early long hood cars, as they say, the train has left the station. It is, they're six-figure cars all day. So one of the things that we did to come up with this list was we wanted to figure out kind of how much it would cost per horsepower, right? <laughs> and so how many horsepower did the 997 have? We've got it on the board over there. Uh, what, three, said 325 probably first generation? Yeah, we're talking like about the first generation. 2005 And how much does it cost about? Oh, you probably can get one, 35,000. Yeah, yeah, and if, if you do the math, that comes out to basically $107 per horsepower. Yeah, if you, if you take the 35,000, divide it by the, yeah. Yeah, so you know that's a, that's not a bad number, right? That's pretty good value. That's pretty good value. And the other cool thing about the 997 is you're getting all of the latest and greatest Porsche technology, without having to go to the dealership and ponying up what 90k or something for a 911. That's a good place to start, anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and it goes it goes up from there. So uh, if you guys are in the market, what year is the first year of the 997? Uh, 2005. So 2005. So we're looking 10 year old car. Yeah. Uh, you can go to your credit union. You can probably finance it. Yeah, it, any pretty much anybody will finance a ten-year-old car. Yeah, uh, but once you get a little older than that, it's a little trickier. All right, here's a TFL top tip when buying a Boxster: always check. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, there's no engine back here, Adam. Uh, there is a dipstick and there is some coolant. So uh, how do you check the engine on a Boxer? Yeah, that's one of the problems on these cars, yeah. that the engine is a mid-engine car. So uh, if you want, I'll show you how to get to it. Yeah, sure. We'll put the top about halfway up. We'll release the two cables underneath here. Then we've got four quick connects underneath here. And then five Zeus fasteners. There it is. And there's your Boxster engine. Wow. Does this allow enough room to actually work on it or do you have to do it from underneath? You know, the cars are really well designed so you can do a lot of the stuff from up top. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. I mean, in terms of, not dirt, but in terms of actual. No, in this particular car, we can see it's got a brand new oil separator. And that's a really common failure on these cars. Good. So there you have it guys, that's how you get to a Boxster engine. Um, number four on our list is another 911, the 964. Why do we pick the 964? You know, the 964 is an air-cooled car, which is definitely from the purest standpoint, right? A lot of guys... And those are expensive. They are. They're, they're still big dollar cars and they've been going up like crazy. And, and the 964 falls right between the Carrera uh, 911 SC body and the 993 body, which was the last of the air-cooled cars. and it's been really undervalued for a long time. They were really leaky cars when they first came out. Uh, they had some trouble sealing up the engines, but all of those have been pretty much done by now. So what you're saying is, even though the engine has leaked, like I said, by now the collectors who've had them have pretty, fixed them. Pretty much. And how much, uh, how much can you get one for? Again, those are right in that $30,000 mark. You can still find them in the high 20s, uh, and I'm willing to bet in the next 10 years, not a chance. Yeah, yeah, and the cool thing about any old 911 is they're always over-engineered, right? So this could be a daily driver. It is it is true. The, the 964 is sort of, it's sort of the last of the raw uh, early 911s with all of the great technology for drivability that came in in the 90s. They come in an all-wheel drive version. Uh, they're, they're all everyday drivers. They're real cars. Yeah, and so um, it had about 247 horsepower. Obviously, Porsche made a lot of variants of all of these different models. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about the base Carrera. Uh, and when you do the math, that comes out to about $121 per horsepower. Yeah, still pretty good value. Whenever you're buying a used car, always check for paint. A good indication of whether or not a car's been wrecked or not is if you can see clear color variation between a bumper and a hood, or maybe a left and right fender. Hey Adam, I gotta say, I can see clear color <laughs> variation between a bumper and a hood. Yeah, this car's definitely been painted. All right, the next one is, I think, a screaming deal. Uh, it's the Cayenne Turbo. Why would you pick, and we're talking about the very first generation. Yeah, Cayenne. first generation. Uh, what year? Well, they came out in 2003, the Turbo yeah. comes out in 04. You know, if you, if you can only have one car, okay. which a lot of, that's really the reality for a lot of people, one car, the Cayenne Turbo f checks all the boxes. It's an SUV, it's, a, it's not a sports car, but it's a, it's a big horsepower. Yeah, yeah, and how much are those about? Uh, they're getting to be in the teens. Uh, we wow. see them trading around 16000 right now. Wow, so, um, you know, I got to drive a Cayenne GTS, mm -hmm. and, I, you know, I was kind of a typical Porsche snob, and I'm 911, <laughs> so I got in the thing, and I was expecting to hate it. You know, it's a glorified Touareg, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> well, I mean, that's the story, right? They're, they're same line, same... Yeah, yeah, same family heritage. And then I got in the thing and I absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah, they're awesome cars. Um, absolutely fell in love with it. Th yeah, they, and they go like crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, it's even one of those cars that is tall and heavy and does things that it shouldn't do. It does, and you know what? You're going down the road and, and you step on the gas and you, you kind of wait, and then that turbo kicks in and bang! Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're and, awesome. And if you don't have the turbo, because the turbo obviously has bigger wheels and lower profile, yep. you can actually take them off road. Now, I don't know anybody who does, but they are really capable off road vehicles. So if you have a regular Cayenne um, and you want to go off roading with it, you will be. Yeah, they, they, they're a real car, they're a real truck. 
Now we did some math here, and now the horsepower number is going up, and the dollar number is going down. So the turbo had 450 horsepower, and if you're figuring about 16 to 20 k for that car, it's about 35 dollars a horsepower. That's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. Whenever you're buying a Porsche convertible or any other kind, be sure to put the top up and make sure that back glass isn't cracked. A broken plastic window can cost you as much as two or three thousand dollars if you have to replace the whole top. Um, let's go to the next one. Uh, once again, we're back to 911s because, well... That's just how it is. Yeah, the 996 Turbo. Talk to me about that car. So the 996, uh, you know, that came out in 99. That's kind of like the car we've been working on. Yep. Uh, the, but that's not the turbo. That's a but correct. that's not the turbo, right. right? So all the 996 is a really great deal, but the turbo is probably the little gem in there. Uh, it's the price has fallen. The the price is artificially low because yep. of the other cars. 420 horsepower. Yeah, big horsepower. Power. Big uh, horsepower. All wheel drive. All wheel drive, and no IMS issue. IMS no, bearing. No, no, it's a, it's engine. the old. Uh, it's actually a 964 style architecture for the bottom half of that engine. So they're really stable cars mechanically. How much? How much? You can get them in the 30s. Yeah. Um, Those are going to be really... You know, a really patient person... Written could, hard and uh, put away wet. You know, a patient person could find them about 32, but I would say in the high 30s, yeah. 40s, you're, you're in there. You're in there. And you got yourself a, a 911 Turbo. Yeah, and... And, and it's an all-wheel drive one, so it won't kill you. And when you talk about collectability, too, uh, the Turbo was a little rarer. It was, it was a more special car to begin with, and the likelihood of those prices going up is... Pretty good. Now, um, um, you know, this car looks like it's black, but it's not. It's kind of got it's no, it's gray. A, it's a pearlized gray, gray color. Yeah, yeah. But I've always been curious what the name of that color was. And you said all Porsches since like forever have had their little color code on the sticker. Is that yeah? It is. True? And it's actually a really good way to yeah. see if a car's ever been repainted or maybe reworked. Yeah. It's not a guarantee, but if the sticker's still here you're pretty well assured that it's probably a factory sticker. Yeah, because if, let's say if it gets hit, which will most likely be in the front, because right. that's how cars get hit, then, you know, if they replace this, they probably won't go to the trouble to replace the sticker. Probably not. Yeah, unless they're super crafty. <laughs> Here we are, drum roll please. The number one car is sitting behind Adam. <laughs> and if you want a Porsche, first of all, that's a boxer, obviously. And what year is that? That's a 97, first and, year. And I noticed you've got no plates on it, so you just bought it. Yep, we just bought it. How much did you pay for it? We paid $5,000. You paid $5,000 <laughs> for a Porsche Boxster. And if you do the math, it's got 190 horsepower. It's about $25 per horsepower. I don't know how you buy more car for the money, no matter what badge it wears. Yeah, and here's the thing. It's not just an everyday driver. It's a race car. Yeah. Right? We, you race those. We do. We have a lot of customers who race these cars. I race one of these cars. They're, they're fantastic. Uh, a lot of people have said, you know, it's the, the term has moved on. It used to be the poor man's Porsche was your 944, your 924, and now they say that about the Boxster. Uh, I've never met anybody who's actually driven one who would ever say that. They're, yeah. they're a real car. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a race car, it's got what you'd want, right? It's got that mid-engine design. Yep. It's got really great weight distribution. Uh, they made a lot of them, so they, parts are relatively... They made a ton of them. Parts are relatively a, a, a available and relatively inexpensive. The only other car that I can think of that would be cheaper to race would be a Miata. Same kind of deal. Yeah. 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 But that's a Miata and that's a Porsche. That's all right. That's got the little Stuttgart badge on it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We always like to give you a bonus, Adam. So what's our bonus? Uh, the bonus car today is a 914. All right. Why 914? You know, the 914 uh, falls in the early air-cooled category of Porsche. Yeah. And with the rising prices of the early 911s, the 914, which was sort of forgotten about for a oh, long time. It's not like that, but... It, it really is. Yeah. It's, it was a mid-engine car. Yeah. It, it was Porsche's other car in the 70s. And they parked it with Volkswagen, so exactly. people were like, it's a Volkswagen, it's a Porsche. Yeah, but it's actually a great handling car. It's, again, it's a mid-engine car. It, it was a car that was really popularly raced uh, by amateurs in the early 70s. Uh, they're they're awesome cars. Yeah, and we did the math on that one once again, and it's uh, not a lot of power, about 100 horsepower, 98. On a good day. On a good day, and if you do the math, how much did it cost, you said? You know, it used, to be, it used to be 500 bucks, but yeah. now they're climbing, they're about 20,000 bucks. Yeah, it's $103 per horse, which, uh, you know, still within the realm of, of this yeah. of this cheap, but the, obviously the winner is the Boxer because uh, it's undervalued, underappreciated, and it's a real Porsche. Now, at TFL, 
we always like to go the other way. <laughs> so in case you're curious, I, I have to ask Adam, what is the one car, what is the one Porsche that you would absolutely stay away from? I think the one you'll never find in my garage yeah. is a 924. All right, why well, 924? <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's, well, it's probably the one car that just, it never had any horsepower, it doesn't have any great performance, they rust out like crazy. Talk about road hard and put up wet. Yeah, 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 exactly, because people thought they were affordable, which they were, right? And so they uh, bought them and they kind of, uh, yeah, they overused them. They, they just didn't do anything right. Yeah, and I think Porsche wasn't that, uh, even as a company, happy to have them, right? Because they came up with the 944 afterward. Right away. To try to, try to write there. Yeah. Yeah, and the 944 was a good car. They, yeah. they, they did a good job on that one. Yeah, and speaking of 944, I used to own a 944S. Those are great cars, especially the turbos. Yeah. Uh, the reason they're not on our list is, um, why aren't they on our list? You know, I think they're really, when you talk about value cars, they're yeah. really overdone. Yeah. Um, they're getting to be an old car. There's a lot of work that needs to be done on most of them, and you're pretty much upside down the day you buy one right now. Yeah, yeah, and the same thing with the 928. That's another one where you're going to be upside down the day you buy one. Pretty much. Uh, the 928 is just, I think, uh, an 80s supercar that has 80s supercar issues yeah. and repair costs. For, first try in electronics, just not quite. And the 944, especially the turbo, was easily modified. So everybody who, who bought those cars either re-chipped them or reflashed them and basically just, just used up the engine. They just used them up. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this episode of Project Porsche. We've got a lot more fun Porsche stuff coming up in two weeks. As always, this is Roman with my man Adam Jaspers here saying thanks for watching and see you next time on Project Porsche. Ciao. I've only put 8,000 miles on it in five years, six years that I've owned it. So you're the, you're your, the first your dad? First uh, a doctor down in Michigan. Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi, yep. okay. She bought it, I believe she bought it in Michigan, okay. went down to Mississippi, Alabama. Okay. And then uh, my dad bought it. Uh, yep. She moved back to Michigan in November and we got 18 inches of snow and uh, she traded it in that day all right. for a uh, <laughs> for a 911 uh, all wheel drive 911, right? Yeah. Um, and my dad was going by, he'd been looking for one um, he was going by the dealership and it was just parked out front. She had just traded it in. Okay. And so... Um, it's cool that you know the history. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really cool. Well, this, like I said, the car has been in the family now for, what, 16 years?